Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're going to live in. High rise, luxury living. People are the vehicle. People are the connection. People are the expansion. Helping folks just like you find your dream home. It just never disappoints. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The opportunity to achieve our biggest goals and aspirations. It's the American dream. Norfolk has 144 miles of coastline along its lakes, rivers, and the Chesapeake Bay. Today, I'll be taking you on a unique perspective of one of my favorite areas, the downtown Norfolk waterfront. We'll be cruising along the Elizabeth River with Captain Andy Sutter from Freedom Boat Club. We'll get to see some of the sites, amenities, and great living options for downtown. And later, we'll meet up with downtown Norfolk Council, Mary Miller, who'll give us more great information about the downtown Norfolk lifestyle. So it's great being out on the Elizabeth River here today. We're with Captain Andy Sutter, the owner of Freedom Boat Club and my good friend. Andy, thanks for having us out. Glad you came out. This is so beautiful to be out here. So Andy, we are in the same waterways that you started your career back in the Navy right here in Norfolk. Kind of come full circle. What, what made you decide you wanted to stay in this area and work and continue your life and enjoy this great lifestyle? Uh, I love the coastal Virginia area uh, when I was a young kid. That bridge, I came across at 19 years old, and now my business sits over here, so it's been great. I've been here since 1988, retired in 2014, and now I get to own and operate a business literally where my career started. That's terrific. So you were serving the community in a Navy capacity, and now you're serving the community in a totally different capacity with Freedom Boat Club. How does that work? The Boat Club's a franchise. Um, we get to buy, own, and maintain a fleet of boats, and we teach people how to operate them here, right here in Hampton Roads, which is great. One of the other greatest things about being here in the coastal Virginia area, uh, right back behind this building over here, that's where the end, the last battle of the American Revolutionary War took place. Thanks for having us out today, Andy. It's a beautiful day out here on the river. I look forward to seeing some more of the waterfront. So if you're looking for something a little larger than maybe a condo downtown, just steps away, you've got a great option along the Hague with these historic properties. Some of them date back to the late 1800s. They're spacious and offer lots of different options for your living lifestyle in coastal Virginia and downtown Norfolk. We're here at the beautiful Pagoda and Oriental Gardens today with the Downtown Norfolk Council CEO and President Mary Miller. Mary, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So it's a great day. We've been out on the river. We're now down in historic Freemason area. Can you tell us a little bit about what the Downtown Norfolk Council does and how that benefits the residents and businesses down here? Sure. Um, the Downtown Norfolk Council is a membership organization and we also manage something called the Downtown Improvement District. but. We're here to support the residents, support the businesses, um, address any concerns they have, and just work with them to make the, what their environment a much better place to be in, to live in, to work in. You can walk to so many attractions. I mean, world-class Chrysler Museum of Art. You can go to the symphony, you can go to the opera, you can go to Broadway shows. Um, you know, there's festivals and events pretty much almost every weekend. Thanks for joining us today, oh, Mary. Welcome. I know Norfolk's such a special place and this is one of the hidden gems not a lot of people know about it. So thanks for meeting us. Oh, you're welcome. Over the past decade, Norfolk's food and art scene has exploded, creating a vibrant and urban city along Virginia's waterways. Living downtown is a unique experience. If you're looking for a modern waterfront condo that includes a private boat slip, a studio apartment in an old converted warehouse, or a large historic home with period details on a cobblestone lined street in the Freemason District, Norfolk has all of these great living options available. Whether you live downtown or you're visiting, you can see that from our tour today, docking at Waterside and using that as a stepping off point is a great way to enjoy so many fantastic things. 
from grabbing a cup of coffee from one of our local roasters to sipping cocktails or dining al fresco. And all of this is within walking distance to the water where you can see beautiful sunsets and watch the myriad of vessels from tugboats to Navy ships along the river that make it a true working waterfront. Norfolk is a special Southern port town and a great place to call home. Thanks for joining us today on the American Dream here in coastal Virginia and being a part of my hometown, Norfolk, Virginia. I hope you enjoyed seeing the sights and the unique perspective of the waterfront as much as I enjoyed showing them to you. I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Ashley Swindell. Take care. Welcome to the American Dream. I'm your host, Chris Kaiser, and this is the Mermaid City, Norfolk, Virginia. So in the spirit of all this naval history, today we're gonna visit the Nauticus Museum and the Battleship Wisconsin. So come on, let's go inside. We're here today with Ren West, Director of Development and Marketing at Nauticus. Ren, could you tell us a little bit about Nauticus and the Nauticus Foundation? Yeah, so Nauticus is a maritime discovery center. We're located in downtown Norfolk, right along the Elizabeth River. Um, we have a main museum, which focuses on telling the stories of the maritime environment, the maritime industry, and the military. We use um, several assets to do that, which include the battleship Wisconsin, which is the largest and last battleship built by the US Navy, as well as our amazing sailing program, where we take students and adults out to sail and explore the Elizabeth River. And last but not least, we're home to Virginia Virginia's only cruise terminal. We serve the community um, with different programs and education and lots of great things. Thank you Thank for you. joining me today and I look forward to seeing you soon. And if you want to learn to sail, Nauticus is the place to come. I'm here with Sarah Linden Brooks, who's the director of Sail Nauticus. Sarah, tell us a little bit about the program. So Sail Nauticus is located right here on the Nauticus campus. It is a community sailing center that is focused on getting individuals out on the water. We run an after-school program for Norfolk Public School middle school students that focuses on leadership, STEM development, and uh, citizenship. And it's a wonderful program right here on our Harbor 20s. Incorporated in 1705, Norfolk has a storied history dating back to the 16th century. We can't overlook the huge naval presence here. Norfolk is home to the world's largest naval station, supporting the largest concentration of U.S. naval forces anywhere. We're standing here on the decks of the battleship Wisconsin, BB-64, and I'm here with Keith Nitka, who's the battleship operations manager. Keith, can you tell us a little bit about this historic vessel? Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. So Battleship Wisconsin is the last battleship built by the United States Navy, uh, starting with number one, BB, BB-1, uh, finishing with BB-64. Uh, Wisconsin is one of the four Iowa-class battleships, the, uh, the last battleships put to sea by the United States Navy, the largest ships uh, that, were in the, that were in the world at the time in the 1940s. Battleship Wisconsin turns 80 years old next April. Uh, but in those 80 years, she saw 14 years of service to this great nation. And in those 14 years were three wars, World War II, the Korean conflict, and then Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And I was a crew member on board during Desert Storm. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much for your support, sir. Hey Lauren, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to 552 Mowbray. Oh, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Isn't it lovely? Look at the barrel ceiling. Oh, it's amazing. It's just absolutely incredible. Well, walking you through this 1910 home, where you have about 6,500 square feet. Wow. You have a living room on your right, a morning room on your left. Okay. Okay, there are four working fireplaces in the houses. That has one, this has one, and two sets of stairs. Okay. Okay, you've got the stairs for well, your house is built in 1910. I had two sets of stairs. <laughs> you got it. One for the, the fans folks and one for us commoners. This is a fitting place for us to end our tour in this mahogany-laden library. 
Um, it's beautiful. Chris, it's been such a pleasure working with you. Thank you for showing me this amazing home, Lauren, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today as we explored some of the history of this amazing city. Please join me next time in Norfolk, and here's to your American dream. Hello there, and welcome to the American dream. I'm Dan Lawson, your host, and today we are in Smithfield, Virginia. So come on, let's go check it out. I'm standing here in front of Smithfield Station, located on the beautiful Pagan River. It was conceived by the Pack family in 1983 and officially opened in 1986. When it was opened, it was originally a marina, a restaurant, and an inn. Over the years, it has grown to more rooms and some shops and the iconic lighthouse, which you might see behind us. I'm standing here with Randy and Brian Pack, and um, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit, Brian, about um, you know, why Smithfield? When your family opened this place, why here? So in the early 80s, my parents, uh, they were really into boating. They had this beautiful sailboat and they took a lot of trips and there wasn't a lot of things to do on the lower bay. So all the trips were in the Northern Bay. Uh, beautiful little uh, waterfront towns and, and they looked at the town of Smithfield and they said, you know, this place is absolutely as beautiful as any of these expensive places we go to in the Northern Bay. Why don't we do something like that right here? And that's, that's where the idea was born to do a restaurant hotel and marina right here. Are there some other unique experiences that you offer uh, at Smithfield Station? Oh, sure, absolutely. When we market Smithfield Station, it's not just Smithfield Station. We're marketing the entire community, so there's so many things to do here in town. Uh, we always believe that you need a place to eat, drink, and spend your money. And the town of Smithfield does all those things. There's <laughs> lots to do here. So, you know, we always hope that when you come and stay with us, you have a meal or two with us, but there's other restaurants in town. Uh, there's the Taste of Smithfield, there's Wharf Hill Brewing, there's lots of shopping downtown. We have shopping on site here in town. Uh, we provide a wonderful place to stay, a wonderful place, place to relax. But there's lots to do in the community, so you're always something to do here. Uh, we have three major festivals a year. Uh, they're all different themed, so it's a great place to be to come and visit. What are some of your earliest memories of Smithfield and, and the Smithfield Station? So my earliest memories were the construction of this place. Uh, Randy and I were making bank right then. $2 an hour, we were Woo! cleanup boys on the construction site <laughs> here. But I remember uh, these, these pylons here, they're all 80 footers, 88 feet actually. Uh, my granddad actually drove them. He worked for McLean at the time and they brought this huge barge up the river and drove the pylons here. But we've had tons of great memories here over, over the years. Uh, some of them some of them were wonderful and some of them were about the type of work we were doing. I remember as a kid, my dad would have me painting these railings all over the place here. Randy and I spent summers painting in, in this place and I, I swore to myself I would always get a job inside. No matter what I did for a living, <laughs> I'm going to get a job that's got some air conditioning. Lots of community activism here, lots of people involved. Uh, it's just an absolutely wonderful place to raise a family uh, and that's why I live here. We think so too, Randy. Anybody visiting this area looking for a meal or a place to stay, got to come check it out. And of course, no trip to downtown Smithfield is complete without stopping into the Smithfield Ice Cream Parlor for a tasty ice cream treat. Let's go in. I'm over here with Alex Edwards, co-owner of the Smithfield Ice Cream Parlor here at 208 Main Street in Smithfield. Um, love popping here and get some ice cream every now and then when I'm down here visiting the Smithfield area. So, Alex, um, you know what I want. Alex, what do you feel that is the best part of owning a business in, in Smithfield? Um, the best part of owning a business is definitely the community. Uh, we're so close-knit here. Uh, tourism is great here. Uh, everyone is just so friendly and accommodating, and it's just an all-around amazing atmosphere here at Zid Mill. It's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, and yes. thank you for the ice cream. It's oh. great. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today in Smithfield, Virginia. It is a great place to live. It's a great place to visit. Until we see you next time, keep living the American dream.
Katherine Kramer, and I'm your host today on The American Dream. We're gonna explore my hometown of Norfolk, Virginia, and what better way to do it than by boat. So come on, let's go. The Lafayette River was named in honor of Marquis de Lafayette, a French military officer who supported the American Revolution. This river provided a natural transportation route, enabling trade and commerce to flourish, hosting shipyards, mills, and warehouses. Now it hosts a diverse ecosystem and gorgeous neighborhoods. The Norfolk Naval Base is one of the largest and busiest naval installations in the world. With 75 ships, 14 piers, 134 aircraft, and 11 aircraft hangars. The base occupies about four miles of waterfront space and 11 miles of pier and wharf space on the peninsula known as Sewell's Point. In 1907, the World's Fair was held here, commemorating the 300th anniversary of Jamestown. The Norfolk Navy Base, established in 1917, was built on that site and is a cornerstone of the city's history and has been vital to the United States Navy operation. The base expanded in both World War I and World War II, with 400 acres being acquired in 1943 to take on the current landscape you see here today. It currently serves as the headquarters of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet and houses numerous ships, submarines, and aircraft. We're here at one of my favorite places in Norfolk, the Hermitage Museum and Gardens. The Hermitage features nationally recognized art collection, changing indoor and outdoor exhibitions, a visual art studio, natural educational woodlands, and 12 acres of grounds and gardens that offer art, culture, and events to the community. The Sloan's established the Hermitage Foundation in 1937 as a museum to encourage and promote arts within the community. Ultimately, they contributed the house and its contents, the Hermitage grounds, all the outbuildings to the Hermitage Foundation. The Hermitage Museum opened to the public permanently in 1942. Norfolk occupies an area of approximately 66 square miles, making it the second largest city in the state of Virginia. It is located at the junction of the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean with the tributaries of the Lafayette and Elizabeth Rivers. The population is over 244,000 people with over 1.7 in the larger metro area. Just 35 miles northwest of Norfolk in 1607, Jamestown was established as the first permanent English settlement in the States. And Norfolk's proximity made it a vital supply point for the early colony, facilitating the export of tobacco and other goods to England. Over the next two centuries, Norfolk experienced steady growth and development as a result of its maritime position and trade connections. There's no better way to end the day than exploring one of Norfolk's pristine beaches. Ocean View Beach is one of seven miles of pristine beaches nestled on the Chesapeake Bay. And now it's time for me to go enjoy some reggae on the bay, with music by Nature's Child. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Till next time. I'm Sherilyn Whetstone, your host of the American Dream TV show here in Hampton Roads, Virginia. I'm a local realtor, Navy spouse, and mom. From the sandy shores of Virginia Beach to the majestic Norfolk waterfront, Hampton Roads is a treasure trove of unique experiences that leave you wanting to come back for more. Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite neighborhoods in Norfolk, one of the seven cities that make up the Hampton Roads area. Ghent is filled with character, culture, and delicious cuisine, not to mention the eclectic eateries, shops, antique stores, museums, and art galleries. 
It is my pleasure to take you on this captivating journey. What do you say we go check it out? Now that we've walked the streets of Ghent, I have a great idea. Let's go on an adventure and see the sights from the water. Let's go. Hi, Eric. How are we Hi, doing? Hi, Erin. Hey. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Yep, it's beautiful weather. Great day for a boat ride. Yeah. Looking forward to going out. That sounds great. You want to come on board? I'm ready. Let's go. So before we get started, I have a question for you guys. Uh, electricity and water don't mix very well. So what is the electrified marina and how did it all get started? We hear that question a lot. <laughs> it actually goes quite well, you're going to see. Uh, but the batteries are safely rated to be submerged in water, so no issues there. And But Erin and I met through real estate. and both kind of bred by Elon. She was with SpaceX, I was with Tesla. She's got a lot of boating in her background and she kind of pulled me into that and we kind of met and Electrified Marina came about. So tell me, what, what type of people rent your boats and do you need a boater's license? Actually, no boating license required. They're low speed, so anybody can take them out, and it's hourly, no membership required. You know, you're only paying when you use the boat, so it works out well. But we've had people rent them from bachelorette parties, especially this boat, uh, to date nights and just going out for brunch, just all around pleasure cruising. So how many boats do you have? The number fluctuates a bit, but right now we have about seven cocktail cruise boats, like this Fantail from Vision Marine. We have one Tesla of the sea, we call it. It's called an Exshore Elix 8000. It goes 35 miles an hour, so that's completely different than this wow. five miles an hour we're going now. We've got jet skis on the way, electric jet skis. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's unheard of, and there's only a couple hundred out there, but we've got 10 of them coming next season. It's pretty exciting. Wow, that is exciting. Oh my gosh, this has been an electrifying experience. <laughs> That's good. Unintended. <laughs> so a lot of people like our electric boats because there's no noise. So instead of yelling over the engines, you can talk normal. I like it. You can it. hear your music without blaring it. <laughs> so the neighbors appreciate us a lot more. And uh, my favorite part is there's no fumes. I know for me personally, I get headaches when there's a lot of gas smell all the time and uh, the lack of fumes is, is what won me over to electric boats. It's been my pleasure showing you the historic neighborhood of Ghent. Thank you for coming along with me and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time on The American Dream. Welcome to American Dream. I'm your host, June Serba, and I'm so excited to show you my city, Virginia Beach. Let's check out one of the most iconic landmarks in Virginia Beach, the Cavalier Hotel. Follow me. This hotel has attracted so many famous guests. 10 presidents and many celebrities. For example, Elizabeth Taylor, Bob Hope, Muhammad Ali, Frank Sinatra, Jimmy Buffett, and the list goes on. Let's take a walk to the lower level where we will find the first bourbon distiller opened in a hotel, Tarnished Truth Distilling. It offers hourly tours flight tastings, and a private room for special occasions. This is the perfect spot to unwind, 
have a delicious drink and mouth-watering food. On the same level, we have the Hunt Room with its warmth and character. When the Cavalier was opened in 1927, the hunters would take their bags of game and return it to the hotel where the chef would prepare the harvest. The hunters would dine in by the open fireplace. During the renovations, the brick masons took each brick out one by one and reinforced the fireplace with two ton steel beams and relayed each brick back in its place. This level also offers a spa, fitness center, and a saltwater pool. In 1942, the United States Navy turned this hotel into a radar training school during World War II. They drained the pool, they covered the windows with blackout curtains, but they kept the chefs, and the trainees were fed very well. Let's go back upstairs and check out the Raleigh Room. With a well-appointed bar area, ready to serve your favorite drinks, nightly live music, and they have their very own grand piano player. Let's walk out to the lawn and enjoy this wonderful view. And across the street to the oceanfront, we have the Cavalier Beach Club. It features a pool, beachside bar, and a hot tub, which is offered to all Cavalier guests. Thank you for joining me on this unforgettable tour of the Cavalier Hotel in Virginia Beach. Join me next time on our next episode when we tour the Edgar Casey Foundation, also known as ARE. See you next time on The American Dream. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget, positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media, at The American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American Dream. Welcome back to The American Dream. Let's get this show started right now. Does this ever get old? A national TV show centered on real estate, lifestyle, and culture. <laughs> I feel like it's down. There's never a day that I don't love hopping on my cruiser, taking a spin around the bay, 